Dr. Sulik, yes. these are all tick questions. Tick questions, all right. Yeah. So the gist of most of these questions is how to know what types of ticks might right. be dangerous all right. and what to do about like just benign irritation from tick bites versus how do you know it's something more serious, right. um, tick prevention. It's kind of all covered in these well, the whole, you want to try to uh, work through some of that. The whole tick society up here has changed recently. Yes. We're seeing, we're seeing deer tick in Marquette County. They're marching sure. up from Wisconsin. They're marching up. Well, they, they're kind of, they actually, um, the biggest vector are actually small mice. Oh, yeah. interesting. They, that's how they start out with their first, their first year of life these little evil rascals live on mice. Mm. And then, then from there, as they become a, a, a more, more like a nymph tick, and then they become an adult, that's when they hop on the deer, they're bigger, and then they get onto the tree branches and they hop onto humans and anything else coming by. So, um, so the, the question is then, how, how, do we know, how do we know what kind of ticks are actually gonna, gonna yes. um, which, create which problems with Lyme disease? We be and we are seeing Lyme disease in Marquette County. Yes, I don't care what, and it, it's kind of like the cougar thing in the UP. They used to say there were no cougars in the UP. <laughs> the ticks they are probably getting here on the cougars. For many years, people have said there are no deer tick in Marquette County. Well, why are we seeing Lyme disease that people didn't leave Marquette County and they have Lyme disease? So I've already treated two cases of early Lyme disease already this year. Yeah. So, and, and I don't even know if they went into their dormant phase over the winter this year because we had such a mild winter yeah. up here. So, you know, this is, you know, this is about the time of year when we start to see the most kind of um, tick bites. It's, it's usually skewed toward early summer, late spring. So, you know, for, the, for us, that's where we are right now. We're into late summer at this point, right? <laughs> you know, so, um, all right, so I did, um, I did prepare some slides earlier yeah, that I sent on to, to Rob. If so if we could those. bring up the slides. Oh, yeah. So the first one, the one on the left, we call that a, a, that's a deer tick. That's the one with the red at the back and it's got that black shield. The entomologist would have a heyday with me. I know it's not called a shield, it's some kind of Latin name, but I'm calling it a shield. It's got a black shield and it's got black legs. More appropriately called the black-legged tick because it's easier to identify when you know it's a black-legged tick because they have black legs. So those are the ones that carry Lyme disease. The one on the right is, is, a, is a wood tick. And we see a lot of wood tick in Marquette, but we're seeing many, many more deer tick, the black-legged ticks, the ones on, on the left. Deer ticks so, are much smaller, correct? The, the deer ticks are much smaller, and I'll show you on the next slide, but not yet. But now I'll go back to the previous one, because I want to show you the wood tick, thank you. So the wood tick actually has all this white pattern on the back, and if you have one of those Uper black lights to look for the Uper rocks, you can shine the black light on it, you can actually see that white pattern that does not come out on the um, deer tick that's on the left. Okay, so the next slide actually shows how, how small these are, and that's actually a large nymph, so they can actually be as si the size of like a sesame seed. So those are the ones that'll get you in the summertime. They actually stay poised on tree branches and, and bush branches. They wait for you to walk by, and they jump on you. You don't even feel them. And this is, you can, you can quote me, this is the quote of the show, they will happily crawl up any crack, and you <laughs> won't feel them. Right? So when you come home from a hike or if you've been out in the woods, check yourself over. That's really, really very important. And if you find a tick on yourself, we'll talk in a little bit about how to actually pull those off because you want to do it the right way because they actually glue themselves in. Mm. So the next slide, I th well, so that shows how they, that's, that's their little snout. C completely different from the mosquito. They bury that little snout into your skin and those other two things that are on the front, they actually use that to dig into your skin. And they secrete a glue type substance and they actually stay there. And it takes a few days for the Lyme bacteria to actually get into your, to get into your lymphatics. So um, the next slide, um, that shows one that's actually embedded into your skin. And, and they will not just get up and leave, even when they know that they're recognized. They can't because they're actually stuck in there. So when, this is typically how you'll find a, a tick embedded on you. You won't feel it when it bites you because they inject you with an anesthetic. So you want to take some very fine tweezers. I forgot to bring my tick remover, but, but you, want to, you want to get some very fine tweezers to get right down at their mouth parts. You don't want to squeeze the body that's tempted to just squeeze their body and pull it off because then that works like a hypodermic needle and you spread the whatever disease they might be carrying right into your lymphatics. You don't want to do that. You want to grab them with a, with a fine pair of tweezers or even a pair of needle nose pliers, and you got to pull hard. Your skin's going to tent up, and it, you got to pull that thing off and try and get all the mouth parts off. 
So I think the next slide is a totally engorged oh. tick. That's how big they get. They get like, you know, up five, six times their original size. They're just complete gluttons. I have no idea how they even get around and survive after that, but I would say that's a very um, well-fed, happy tick right there. So, and I think there's one more tick slide, or was that the last one? Oh, the most important thing, I almost forgot. That's the typical target rash that people get in early Lyme disease. And that happens usually between two and seven days from the tick bite. If you get bit by a tick and you have, and you have a rash that's moving out like that, they don't always look like a target. Some people don't get the rash, and that's an important thing for even doctors to recognize. But, but that's actually a case of Lyme disease. That's active Lyme disease. That should be treated with at least a 14-day course of doxycycline at that point. And you can halt that, that progress of the Lyme disease. It's already spreading under their skin. So that's a very important thing to note is that, is that rash. If you, get a, if you get a round, big rash after a tick bite within a week or two, you should run to your doctor and point out that you got bit by a tick. If you can save the tick, you want to put Ooh, it in like something. That. We have a collection down at our office. Do you? Yeah. But you want to make sure you put it in something they can't get out of because they will get out of anything. They are still alive even after you kind of rip their heads off. They are nasty, nasty, evil little things. They're hard to kill. They're totally evil. So, 